hey there guys and welcome back on this week's show part four and hopefully the finale of our ships in a bottle build when we finished up with last week's show we had just got both of our ships into the bottle and they are sunk into the white silicone well believe it or not it is actually a week later now and um Everything's dried up, so now it's time to start raising the mast. So let's head over to the bench and uh, I'll walk you through it. Well, hopefully we're not going to get too much glare off the bottle, um, but I'm going to raise the rear ship first. So I'm just gonna release these threads off the bottle here. And what we're going to do, you need to get inside that bottle with some of your shot made tools and you need to assist with the raising of these masts. You don't want to just rely on pulling on the strings. Um, you can give them a little tug to see if they're gonna move, but because of the angle you're pulling them on, it might cause you difficulty. Now, one of the things with square rigging that you're gonna have to watch out for is those spars of the square rigging, they love, absolutely love, to hook up in the rat lines that we installed. So you want to be careful of that and make sure that uh, before you glue any of your strings in place that you have gone through and made sure that nothing is hooked up. So we're just gonna grab this center mast by the top, hopefully, and gently pull it up. And then we'll pull up this front one just gently. And then the rear one. And we'll just keep working this until we get them all upright. I can see already that that back spar, that small spar at the back is hooking on something. I just don't know what. So we're going to try to fix that. So just gently pull each of the masts up until you get them upright. If anything gives you any kind of resistance, stop. Don't force it because obviously something is hooked or something is not quite right. They go through quite a process and it's quite a, a jostle to them kind of thing to get into the bottle when you're squishing them together. So it's quite possible that threads are hooked and things aren't quite like they should be. So just be patient. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm going to see if I can't pull some of these lines. Okay, they're not quite cooperating. So I'm gonna maneuver these sails or these masts into their upright position and then I will uh, continue with this when I get them all vertical. Well, I've run into a bit of a snag and what has happened is on the rear mast of the larger of the two ships, I have one of the rigging lines from the very top uh, square rigging spar has somehow got wedged and jammed underneath the hull of the ship. Um, I've been trying for about a half an hour now to release that line. I will continue to try to release it, but I'm starting to end up loosening the riggings on the rest of it. I don't want to do that. So if worse comes to worse and I can't get this thing released in the next uh, couple of tries, I'm going to basically cut my losses on that piece of rigging and I'm going to cut the thread off of the spar. It's better to keep the rest tight and lose that one rigging line uh, than it is to, to have them all look loose and sloppy. Uh, no one's going to notice that one rigging line has been cut off and is missing, but if everything is loose, that they're going to notice. So there you go. There's something to watch out for. Be careful you don't do what I did and accidentally end up with one of your rigging lines in your... Um, in, in your silicone while mounting it. Either way, I'm gonna deal with this and then uh, 
I'll see you when I get that fixed up. Well, one of the things in woodworking is knowing when you're beat. And uh, that one had me beat. There was no way I could fix the lines. I tried, I tried, I tried. Uh, I tried to get them out. I was loosening too much of the other rigging. It was just jammed under there. It's completely sealed in the silicone underneath. So it's disappointing. It's very disappointing to have to do that. But in this case, it was a necessary evil and I had to cut that one line from the square rigging of the spar. Um, there are some loose threads now that are hanging up at the top, but I'm not gonna be too concerned just yet. We'll cut those off after. So there we go. Live and learn, right? That's, uh, that's a first for me. I've made several of these and that's the first time I've ever had the rigging get caught up in the silicone of uh, our water. But, oh, you know, you saw it here in today's show, so you guys know that you can look out for that now. Uh, learn from my mess up. Okay, so we've pretty much got this one raised up now, and I'm going to move on to raising up the smaller mass ship. Hopefully I'm not going to have that kind of an issue when I raise these sails, but I'll, we'll see. I'll get it done, and I'll come back and see you and give you the report. Well, we never had any problems with the rigging on the second ship, but what I have is a rear sail here that is let go from the spar. So I'm going to have to get in here with these shop made tools and we're going to reattach it. Um, all I'm going to do is get a little bit of glue onto one of the tools. I'll apply it to the side of the spar and then using a clean tool, I'm gently going to fold this uh, sail back up and reattach it to that mast and then we'll have to let that dry. It's nothing to worry about it's all part of the process and sometimes that stuff happens. Well at this point we're at a standstill because we have to wait for that sail to dry. We can't be messing around with it until that sail is completely dry which means tomorrow. But for now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the stand and it all starts off with some scrap cherry and some scrap curly maple. For my ships in a bottle I want to keep the base simple. I don't want it to distract uh, too much from our ships. So I have a scrap piece of curly maple. It measures six inches long and four and three quarter inches wide and I've placed a chamfer on two of the edges. This is actually a scrap left over from our tongue drum build that we did here on the show quite some time ago. So that's it for this. That's all I want. We can sand that up and that'll be done. But now I have two pieces of half inch thick scrap cherry. They're just over two inches wide and they're four inches long. I've marked the center line on each one and I've also up from the bottom marked a line right across here at five eighths of an inch up from the bottom. So what I want to do is I just have this scrap of plywood here. I've marked a center line on it. We're going to line up those two center lines and using our compass I have measured the uh, diameter of our bottle and it is just shy of seven inches. So I've set my compass to that dimension and what I want to do is I want to five eighths of an inch up I want to place a radius of the bottle on our pieces of cherry. There's one and we'll just do the other one here. Okay, and I'm going to take these over to the scroll saw and cut them out. So the next thing that I want to do with this is I want to take it over to the table saw. We will use the miter fence and we will cut a 45 in such a way so that it lines up or ends at this mark that we put at 5 eighths up from the bottom. And you should have brackets that look like this. So we're going to give everything a really good sanding and then we are going to glue and mount these pieces here just like that so that they are 3 eighths of an inch in from either edge and that is it for our stand. We just need to apply a finish to it and that's it. As simple as it comes and uh, that's it. 
All right, so at this point in time now, we need to do the final adjustments on all of our rigging. And for that, there's no real secret to it. There's no real uh, crazy method to tell you. It's just a matter of pulling the strings tight, making sure that everything is aligned the way that you want it. And once you get them all lined up, you need to secure them in any way possible on the outside of this bottle. So I'm going to, now that that sail is dried up, I'm going to give all of these their last final tightening. And then uh, once I get all the lines secured, we can then glue things together. All right, and those are pretty tight there. I like the way they look. So I'm going to very carefully secure these to the bottle. Temporarily, I'm just going to run them up into the handle here and uh, I'll wrap them all up with rubber bands to keep them in place in just a bit. But we can only do that once we get the other boat completely secured. All right, we'll do the second set now. As you're giving them their final tightening, you'll want to make sure that they're not getting tangled up in the rigging. This front sail is tangled a little bit in the rat lines, so we just need to break it free in order to get it right. The second sail down is also tied up in those rat lines. So there we go. All right, I think we're good there. So I'm gonna tie these off as well. Okay, we're gonna spin these around the neck of the bottle and once I get them secured there, I'm going to use rubber bands to keep them in place. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. It's, a, it's difficult enough to get these lines glued in place when there is just one ship. But now we have two sets of rigging that we have to work around. Now in my original tutorial, I had used CA glue. And I'm going to tell you that is not a good thing to use. Uh, experience has taught me that CA glue will haze up the inside of your bottle. So we're not gonna use that. What we're going to use in order to secure all of our mast lines is this stuff, which is clear E6000 adhesive. So in order to do this, we're just going to use one of our little shop made tools here made out of a coat hanger we're going to apply a little bit of adhesive to the end of our tool and we're going to get right inside the bottle here and at every place where our um, rigging goes through the ship, we need to put a little dab of glue to keep it from moving. That includes all of our square rigging of our sails. So you want to get your square rigging all set and then once you have it the way you want it, you will get down here beside the boat and you will apply adhesive to each hole where the um, rigging travels through the hull. So I'm gonna set it all up, 
get everything all nice and square the way I want it and uh, apply the adhesive. And once again, as you've heard so many times in this series, then it's just a waiting game. We gotta leave it overnight at that point. Well, it's been 24 hours and we're going to release the rubber bands here, which will release our rigging on the ship from the edge of the bottle. Um, there's no guarantees here that you glued everything properly. So you're going to need to test it. And uh, you'll just get a little dowel or one of your shop made tools in here. And we just want to put just a little pressure, just a tiny little bit on the front strings of the bowsprit or the front rigging. And if it is holding, then you can cut the strings from underneath the bowsprit. This actually looks really good. It seems to have held well. So we'll just check this side. And same thing. So at this point now, we can get in here. I've got an X-Acto knife, uh, a little small blade that is attached to a piece of dowel. Now we're just gonna get in here and very carefully trim, trim those strings off. Okay, there's one. So far, so good. <laughs> and now we'll get in here and trim this second one off. Just like that. Okay, well, at this point now we need to deal with, or I need to deal with, um, those strings that are sunk into the <laughs> the silicone at the rear of the larger ship, as well as the, uh, the strings that are sticking up from the, from the top spar of that ship. So I'm gonna deal with that. Same thing, an X-Acto knife on, uh, on a stick or a tool, and we'll get in there, slice those off, and uh, then we just need to cap the bottle. All right, so I have those, uh, I have those strings cut off, it actually took me about an hour and a half to do. Um, it's very difficult to get into the back and hold on to something that's not supported like a thread and cut it off. I ended up using a long 1 8 diameter dowel, cutting a slot in the end and using it to kind of skewer the string, spin it around the dowel, and then reach in with another piece of coat hanger this time uh, with a razor blade attached to it and slice them off but a frustrating process. So if you can at, a, at all avoid it, uh, be careful with your riggings when it comes to uh, your silicone mounting your ships inside your bottle. Well, this is not the cork I had intended. This is a cork for an old uh, champagne bottle. It's a very loose fit. I'm not a big fan of it, um, but I will put it here temporarily because uh, I know I have other corks here somewhere in the shop that will fit it. So I'm gonna mount this one just temporary in the uh, neck of the bottle and that will finish that off. So once we get that cork mounted, really at this point, all there is left to do once we get a finish on our stand is just display our masterpiece. And uh, look at that, that's just beautiful. And there you have it ships in a bottle. Guys, I never expected this to be a four-part series. Um, in fact, I figured it might be two parts at the most, but it is a very time-consuming project, and I didn't want the series to be something like, hey, look at what I did, instead of giving you a bit of instruction. Now, this was meant to go along with the original six-part series that I brought you on how to make a ship in a bottle. I did it quite some time ago and it goes from everything from choosing your bottle right through to making the stand, um, how to make the ocean using silicone and that sort of thing. Uh, it's a great series, if I do say so myself, 
So if you're inclined and this build today at the end of this series has intrigued you, you might want to check that series out and then you can get all the information and then it's kind of uh, it's kind of an accompaniment to this or this is an accompaniment to that. Uh, either way, it's a lot of fun. Guys, these things take time. You, you need quite a bit of patience. Don't be in a rush. If you're in a rush, or every project you do seems like, go, 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 I gotta get it done, then don't do one of these. Because you will just be frustrated to no end and there will not be any half decent results. Um, but if you're someone who wants to give this a try and just do a little project, say sitting at your desk or that sort of thing, you don't need a lot of power tools with this. In fact, you don't really need any at all. So uh, pretty much every single process that I did here was done with things like utility knives or or that sort of thing. There's no need for power tools here. So it's one of those things that you could do, say, in an apartment if you don't have a shop or in a basement if you're worried about dust down there with the larger equipment. Either way, guys, this thing is a load of fun and you want to give it a try. Um, I would use a little bit of clear silicone, just a slight little bead on the stand once the finish is applied to solidify that bottle on there and hold it in place. That way it doesn't get accidentally knocked off of the stand. Um, I did that with my other one. It still holds to this day. It still looks great. And as long as you don't get any ooze out of the silicone, just a fine little bead, you're fine. Um, you also want to keep in mind with making your stand. Don't make the brackets higher than your resin pour. It'll look kind of off and it'll take away from the gorgeous work you've done inside the bottle. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I, I really enjoy making these ships in a bottle. Uh, they are truly a load of fun, and the, the feeling of satisfaction when you finally get it done is just unexplainable. Unless you've tried it yourself, uh, I, I don't think you would fully understand looking at that final product of a ship in a bottle and saying, wow, man, that looks great. So truly, give it a try and see how you make out. I'm sure you're going to love it. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, you know, click that bell and then you won't miss notifications of future episodes of the show. Who knows, there might be another ship in a bottle down the road. You never know what this show is going to bring. Guys, I hope that you're enjoying the content that I'm bringing to you. I hope that you're going to try some of this stuff for yourself. And more importantly, I really hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.